episode of Visual, and today we have some complex new discoveries made about Pokemon Rumble on Wii. While playing around when recording the previous video, I made a somewhat huge discovery. Let's get into it. The way Pokemon Rumble works on a game standpoint is quite easy to understand. You run around, attacking other wild Pokemon using two buttons. Not much to it. It's fun, don't get me wrong, though, just easy to grasp. However, the methods of which the game does this on a technical standpoint, and in general, all technical knowledge of this game is very limited. What I have discovered, I believe, has yet to be documented anywhere until now. First, let's take a look at my theory about walls. The way walls work in this game is extremely bizarre. For a game like Super Mario 64, the walls work by pushing Mario away from it at a perpendicular angle, so if Mario hits the wall flat, the wall will act like a wall and he won't move. In Pokemon Rumble, on the other hand, moving flat against a wall will do nothing to momentum, you can just keep moving against it. This in itself isn't actually that strange, there are a few games that do this, some that come to mind are Pokemon games where you can still walk into walls indefinitely. What is strange is that if you keep holding perpendicular to the wall, you will begin to slide around. This typically takes place by moving you a bit one direction and then going full force in the other after a certain period of time. Note that this is also the reason that stuttering is possible. The walls attempt to push you in two directions extremely quickly. Keep in mind, I'm not a smart person at all. If you see an obvious explanation of this mechanic, do not hesitate to let me know. It benefits us all. However, I still do not know, so here are some theory. Most collision in other games takes place by prohibiting movement and stopping the player. Rumble walls do not do that. Now, this could very well be a bizarre type of collision, but if it's not, that means it may be able to be exploited to our advantage, particularly in the realm of finding an out-of-bounds trick in Rumble. Let's say that rather than collision, this type of wall just pushes you outwards, but it doesn't stop you. Let's also assume that the walls do this based off a Pokemon's model type. Let's make a final assumption and say that the walls stop pushing you out at a certain point. If somehow we, are, we manage to get a Pokemon through the seemingly unpassable bridge, voila, we've out of bounds did. However, the odds of walls actually working this way is unlikely to say the least. The fact that you can just schmoove against walls in this game raises a lot of questions schmoof, about how they work. They could function identically as sloped objects, hence why they don't just push you one direction. But even this raises more questions, like how does the game determine which way to push you first? Without more info, this is all baseless spec speculation. Secondly, in this video, I'd like to discuss a much more concrete discovery I made about Pokemon's hitboxes and model types. Although important, there's not a lot to explain with it, so this segment shouldn't take too long. For a long time, I wondered how models and hitboxes were treating, treated in this game. The previous Pokemon Rumble glitch in particular brought up quite a few questions, but nothing was found. And there wasn't really a way for things to be found either. Until, that is, I started recording footage for the p potential out of bounds setup video. I was messing around with it and made an incredibly important discovery. <laughs> I happened to notice that some Pokemon could get closer to walls than the other, and noted by how far up the HP bars were. I figured I'd just try to brute force a way into understanding the hitbox types in the game, as I imagined they didn't give hitbox collision data to over 200 Pokemon individually for a $15 Wii game. Well, turns out I was right, and more so than I thought I would be. I'm not cocky, I promise. I was, like I said, brute forcing it through some Pokemon, and I noticed a very distinct trend. Pokemon that were floating, like not touching the ground, were consistently able to get closer to the walls than Pokemon on the ground. Now, I hear y'all young bloods inquiring, what does this help us with? Why should I care about some dumb nerd stuff in my Pokemon WiiWare game? Well, foolish mortal, I'll tell you. Knowing what kind of Pokemon react and what way to collision means that we can narrow down our search for a setup for not only out of bounds in the terminal, but many other stages. Outside of out of bounds, there's a tons of model clipping and collision abuse potential with models and hitboxes like the ones used in Pokemon Rumble. For example, when playing one day with XJT Force, a homie of no falsehood, we discovered a method of just straight up teleporting to the end of the stage via multiplayer. But that's a video for another day. 
Anyway, I'd say that just about wraps up our expedition into some finer details about the game. Well, I'm sure it's not as interesting as my previous Rumble Glitch videos, if you can even call them interesting. This is still something I found intriguing, not to mention that this is the first time, to my knowledge, that this information has become quote-unquote publicly available. With that being said...